everybody, welcome back to Hit Point, a JRPG news show, an anime news show, a niche news show, basically, basically, anything that Baku and I feel like talking about, we're going to talk about, and today, guys, have we got some news for you. Yeah, absolutely. Baku, have, Baku, have we got have we got news for them? Uh, as a legitimate question. We we might have a little bit of news. Just just I don't know. Just just a little bit of news. Like look, listen, the year is winding down. Okay, like do you know how hard it is to like find news <laughs> to talk about? Like, come on. I know. Give me a break. <laughs> Baku went out into the into the strange and and weird <laughs> world of RPG news out into the wilderness, <laughs> all on his lonesome, facing against the the wilds in order to bring back home some anime and RPG news for his yes. for his starving children, you at home. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all better enjoy it. Oh, man. Thank you so much, Baku, for joining me. And, and thank you all at home for joining us, uh, because this is not our standard uh, time to be streaming. We do normally stream every Sunday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're, today we're going to talk about, you know, news. We're going to be previewing some trailers, talking about rumors, and, uh, we'll also respond to Super Chats at the end of the episode, as always. But, yes. Baku, how have you been this week, man? How are you doing? Oh, today? my God. This, this, this weekend was just chaotic. And, and I do have to apologize to everyone for having to come to a, a Monday evening show. That was my fault. Uh, this is, this is my turn. This is my fault. How uh, dare I, you, sir? <laughs> my, my nephews just, um, decided to show up to my house on Sunday. So, uh, and they didn't leave until like, like 8, 9 PM. So, uh, it would have been pretty bad. You would have, you would have heard a bunch of kids screaming, uh, Ugh. outside and just like thumping, uh, cause I'm in the basement. So like. You, you, you're going to hear footsteps and like, I'm like, yeah, this is not happening. Um, yeah. Here. So I messaged them like, yeah, my nephews just came and I don't think we can do the show today. Oh <laughs> yeah. But it was fun. I, I love, I love seeing them just like, I just wish they wouldn't come on a Sunday night. Cause that's, cause that's, that's like, that's, that's the yeah. witching hour, right? That's well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's when uncle Baku wants to just like relax with like a, a <laughs> glass of whiskey for Monday, you know, like, uh, as yeah. I'm like contemplating on life and I, I just don't need to like uh, rumbunctious kids like running around. Yeah. I said the word rumbunctious. Like, that's, <laughs> I think that's a good way of describing them. Baku um, turning into old man, uh, old man geezer Baku here. Yeah, no, basically. Uh, <laughs> and and I, I will apologize early too if if we start hearing like door knocking is because you know it's Halloween and kids are actively trick or treating right now. So, uh, <sighs> yeah, at some point I might have to like excuse myself and pass them candies and come back. Hopefully, it won't be too disruptive. Um, oh my but, goodness! You know, yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what. Um, that's that's okay. I I I do have to apologize because everybody today uh, it is Halloween and had we been planning on a Halloween show from the start, we would have definitely dressed in more than just like my you know uh nightmare before christmas t-shirt or something my final fantasy 7 <laughs> <laughs> we all know final fantasy 7 is a horror game i'm just <laughs> i mean it, there there are vampires or something like that so it's true I, whatever the heck Gen Gen genova is i don't know yeah a, a alien invader i mean that's that's as scary as it gets so that's what you were doing uh on yesterday but how has your week been otherwise dude have you been streaming have you been doing anything uh i am still streaming uh horror games so uh, i'm extending my spooktober into the first week of november that's why spooktober is now uh, invading november mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's okay. okay november i can give up a week uh i didn't i didn't play enough horror game uh this this spooktober so i'm gonna stream some more horror games um we we're still working on uh ghostwire tokyo and uh it's it's been a it's been a it's been a ride uh I, bet. I, I i would really recommend anyone who can uh stand a first person uh game because uh some 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 folks some people like get motion sick. yeah yeah they you will get motion sick. but also i still feel like that game would be perfect for vr like i'm just like this game oh. would be so good in vr why like look playstation 5 like P ps5 like sony Mm -hmm. right they're just trying to push psvr am i right yeah and guess what goes why tokyo is a ps5 game so i'm just like maybe some synergy like maybe come and help them develop a and, and someone brought up a good point it's like yeah you know tango they may not have the money right or, or something for this but i'm just like play the game and and you tell me that this is like not like a, a 
perfect game for VR. Like, I, I think any RPG that you would make on a VR, like, should be something like this. Yeah, because um, it's got that horror element. It's already in first person, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense that they that yep. they should. And maybe, who knows, maybe that'll be a DLC patch. Kind of like the opposite of the Resident Evil Golden Edition, right? <laughs> yeah, basically, basically. <laughs> Yeah, I think Sony can spare a little money to bring on more like, you know, VR titles, right? And it's like, look, this is a perfect game. It's already on your platform. Just just make it happen. Um, so we'll see what happens. With so that. what are you playing after you finish Ghostwire Tokyo? What are, what are you going back to? Is it Trails in the Sky the third? Is that what you were doing? Well, after after Spiritober, yeah. Uh, I, I still have one, at least one other horror game plan. It's going to be a short one. It's called Lost light uh I, okay. we, we showed it the other day mm -hmm. it is very similar to yomawari but i i it might be from a korean developer it might be from a uh a, a japanese developer this one's an indie developer and it's like maybe a five six hours game oh, okay. so it's like a lot shorter and yeah. and it, which is nice because it you know after playing like 100 hours of trails like i just need something that like tells a quick story to yeah. like a little <laughs> a little palette cleanser sure sure absolutely i think i think every rpg gamer should have some palette cleanser like you know games like lined up at the ready oh yeah you know yeah i yeah. mean for instance after golden sun my palette cleanser will be trails of cold steel yeah mm -hmm. yeah it, it's like wait what <laughs> what <laughs> what <laughs> no it's like it's like going out to isushi you know those like ginger pieces you know oh, why yeah, they're yeah, there yeah. it's like it's like that's like the palate console you're like uh -huh. you eat the fatty fish and then you eat like a little slice of ginger right you take mm -hmm. a sip of sake that's your palate cleanser that's that's what those short games are right so, yeah yeah yeah, yeah that, that's that's actually i mean golden sun is actually my my palate cleansing games really? at this point in time mm-hmm how yeah. long is that one? Uh, like 30. I'm about 30 hours into Golden Sun, the Lost Age right now. Yeah. RPG Gamer. Just a, just 30 a short hour little, games is a palate cleanser. Yeah. Just a, <laughs> just a short little romp, you know. Oh, my God. But yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been playing a lot of Golden Sun lately. I think mm -hmm. we're nearing the end. I'm I'm like 33 hours in, actually. And I think we're closing in on the, the final. Like, I've already defeated one of the super bosses. And mm -hmm. I, I think I got some more. And a... Another dungeon, at least another dungeon left. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing over there right now. And like I said, after that, I'll be diving into Trails of Cold Steel. I spent um, a little bit of my my afternoon this this afternoon trying to get a hold of uh, X Seed to see if I could get a, my hands on a review copy of a five year old game, mm. uh, Trails of Cold Steel. I don't know how well that's going to work out, but yeah. that's. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I, I don't know if we need advertisement for a game from five years ago. Uh, but I mean, who knows though? I mean, <laughs> you, you've had you've had one initial sales surge on release, mm -hmm. but what about second initial sales surge five years yeah. later? You know? Yeah. But yeah. But I I also reached out about a couple of other games, so I'm hoping maybe they'll you know bundle it in with you know Trinity. Trigger, I hope I hope they. Eight. I hope they will give it to you and I hope they have more reasons to give it to you because, uh, you know, now that people are playing zero uh, or they will be playing yeah. uh, the upside, not zero, they, they are playing zero. They will be playing Azure. Mm -hmm. Guess what's next on, you know, the, the timeline cold yeah, deal. That's... So there should be like a resurgence of like all these new players who yeah. just experienced Crossbell. That's what I'm saying. wants to get into cold steel. That's yeah, what I'm you know saying. What? Yeah. It makes that's sense. what you write to them. You should give them that point. Oh, Be like, they, hey, you know, their 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 PR company doesn't have a spot for uh, an essay like that, and I don't think they have time to read one. <laughs> but uh, but we'll see what That's happens. Fair. That would be nice because uh, I don't want to spend forty dollars on on Cold Steel one right now. <laughs> no one should spend forty dollars on Cold Steel. <laughs> I mean, not um, right now, anyway. I mean, not right now. Yeah, not right now. It was five brand years new, ago, sure, sure, but, sure, but yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, does the, does everyone know that Derek and I stream over at Twitch? Because the link is down below in the description once we complete it. And also, just just it just bears repeating that uh, timestamps will come like a day oh, later. Baku, just, please. The people who complain just, about timestamps, they've already they've already clicked away by now. They've already complained by the time they got they to this point. They've the already <laughs> complained about the timestamp. <laughs> it just. Give give it a day. It's it it takes time. It's give it a day. Speaking of timestamps, yeah. uh, huge thank you to Scott Pilgrim this time. Uh, thank you, Scott. Pick, you know, uh, Freddie Ken, the guy who's been doing a lot of the timestamps. He was on a bit of vacation, enjoying himself as he should. Uh, yes. And, and uh, 
and Scott Pilgrim came in through last week with some uh, timestamps to help save my day. So thank you so much. I, I see, I see Freddie in the chat. I see you there, Freddie. Hey, Freddie's here. Hey, everybody, a round of applause for for our buddy Freddie. <laughs> he says Coastal One is 124 hours short for me. Coastal Four took 328 hours. What? <laughs> what? Oh my gosh! Yeah, so yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be mm -hmm. my, in my immediate future. Yeah, you're really convincing me to play Cold Steel now. <laughs> oh, I'll I'll convince you about mm -hmm. it later. Mm -hmm. I'll you'll probably play it as soon as I'm done with uh uh like a dragon. Yeah, look, listen, Derek. The day that I play Cold Steel is the day that you play like a dragon. Okay, Should make a pack. Yeah. Okay, we'll do this. Um, All right. So let's go ahead and move along into uh, responding to some of those comments from last week. Uh, yes. So do you want to you want to take this first one? Oh yeah. Uh, I I like this one. It, it is so well thought out, and I I I just had to share it. I, I really like this one. Uh, this one is from Lost in Rural England, uh, and uh, they say hi, Baku and Derek. Well, hello to you too. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Uh... Thank you. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's, I, I that's not sarcastic. I, I actually just enjoy people who just take a moment and say hello. That's nice. It's no, seriously. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be crazy thought though. Sometimes just something like this. It's it's just nice. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just letting us know you're out there. Much appreciated. Well, the next one is definitely long, so we'll pass that on to you, Derek. Yeah, this is the one I, I picked up. So uh, yes. this one comes from a friend of the show, Japan Animation Man, who says. I feel like every new PlayStation is just a fancy way of playing the previous one at first. I think I spent like half a year or so with my PS2 before I started getting any PS2 games that I liked and only got a PS3 so I could play PS2 games in <laughs> HD. They all eventually got games worth picking up for the systems for, but it always seems to take forever before it's really worth it. And uh, yeah. And there's a very specific reason that I picked this out. One is because, I mean, it's spot on. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's that's part of the value prospect of a console with a huge backwards compatibility library to draw from, uh, yeah. which is a little bit, you know, the, the PS4 kind of dropped the ball on that a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. But the PS5 is is starting to, to be able to do some pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah. Now, the other thing, though, the, that made me think of this is, so what brought this up is I was talking about how I'm just not a very um, avid collector of consoles upon first release, right? I mm -hmm. uh, I end up like I, I'm a I'm an opportunist, right? And well, anyways, I was talking to uh, somebody at Square Enix earlier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> just you know, just casually, I was, I was just you know talking to them about Star Ocean, and mm -hmm. uh, I was I was. Uh, they were asking me if I had like a review code of Star Ocean. And I said, yes, because of course I do, right? And they said, what platform do you want it on? And I said, PlayStation 4. And they said, PlayStation 4? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that's how I read it anyway, uh, in the in the email correspondence. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and I was like, yeah. I mean, I don't we have a PC that can... Smack. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not one of those people who's got a PS5 just yet, and I and the the console or the the computer rather that I that I do my capture from has an RX 480, which is I thought kind of respectable, and it's got a six core processor, but it's mm -hmm. not it's not within like the recommended specs for you know the brand new Square Enix PC game. So I'm like. Uh, well, yeah, I'll just sounds like we need a GoFundMe uh, or you need <laughs> that's a what somebody you, said in my or, stream or the you other need day. an OnlyFan. That's what somebody said in my stream the other day. I'm like, I don't I don't think I don't I don't huh? want to, but but at the same time, if you think about it, I'm probably not I wouldn't be the only person on GoFundMe with mm -hmm. a with a PS5 fund. Um I would probably just be the most honest person about it. <laughs> <laughs> And we appreciate that. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's I don't fine. think that's gonna happen. But I, I do need to actually get on getting a PS5. I think because it occurred mm -hmm. to me that, uh, yeah, at, at this point, if I'm if I'm getting like sideways glances from publishers, they're like, <laughs> PS4, really? <laughs> really, really? Are you are you okay? You're, you're gonna you're gonna help us advertise our game by showing it run on a PS4. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, that's. I mean, that, no, I, I'm not. I'm not upset or anything about it. It's just, 
I, was, I felt the shame of like, yeah, yeah, I need to get one of those. Okay. <laughs> Uh, either 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 GoFundMe or an OnlyFan. That that's the only <laughs> <laughs> two ways for you to uh, mm -mm. fund yourself a new system. Now, Amy <laughs> says <So>. no. <laughs> <laughs> to which one? <laughs> to, to all of the above. Um, Dang it! So that, we wanted we wanted a Derek GoFundMe. We really did. Well, I, I'm not gonna put it together, but. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, so if we if we put it together, you use it. That I mean, if somebody handed me five hundred dollars, I'd buy a PS Five with it. I'll <laughs> tell you that. But no, that's fair. All right. Uh, yeah. So uh, the next one we've got is from uh, uh, Mer Mermina Mermina, who says uh, the Sonic Hill movies are kind of hated in the fan base. Uh, from what I know, uh, they don't follow the story and change way too much. Yeah, thank you so much for letting us know. Uh, from from what I saw in the chat the other day when we were talking about it, it sounded like people were pretty fond of it. Um, mm -hmm. And from what I read in, it was actually like, you know, not like hated, like I'm hearing from now. But you know, uh, mm -hmm. I, it it is it is a series that it, I'm not it, familiar with, so I probably can depends only a lot on what the, I saw. Probably depends yeah. a lot on the circles that you're running, you know, but. Yeah, but I mean, hey, at, at least at least uh, I I do appreciate you know like what what's the word um I don't know like uh like if there are I don't know Derek what what's the word that I'm looking for um you know uh, contradictory if, if there are things that are contradicting oh. to to what I to what I find like I I want to know about it for sure so oh, yeah. thank you so much for bringing that to my attention yeah it's good um, to have di dissenting opinions for sure there you go there you go that's the word but yeah um but thank you so much for that uh I I still am uh looking forward to seeing what Konami will put out because uh look but by some small stretch, I'm just like, if you're willing to do new games, maybe, maybe you would do something else. That's, yeah. you know, that's well, an RPG. Maybe, Baku, maybe. Baku, are you telling us that you are willing to be hurt again? <laughs> You know, as, as as a JRPG gamer, you are in a very vulnerable position. Um, you true. are at the whim of these uh, giant companies. Uh, you can console into indie games that may or may not come to fruition. Uh, like, uh, was it Arm Fantasia? I mean, look, uh, the, mm. the, I think, and in fact, heck, you know, that's probably one of the biggest ones too, right? Oh, there yeah. are uh, many more other indie developers, like, who, like, probably don't make it. Right, but they, they they want to, they try, they really put their hearts into it. They they don't ultimately make it, and never comes to market. We don't get to play it, uh. So it's it's there's only two ways: it's either some kind of indie spiritual successor that may or may not make it, or you wait until like Lore Square Enix and Lore Konami says yes, I shall provide. Lore Capcom, they're still sitting on you know Breath of Fire, so I'm yeah. just like, what are you gonna? Yeah, you Capcom's know? <laughs> been making lots of good decisions lately. I'm just waiting for that last one. 10 years of consecutive growth. Do you know that? Capcom, 10 no. years of consecutive growth. Yeah, consecutive growth, 10 years. Star, so, uh, um, Monster Hunter doing a lot of heavy lifting, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Monster Hunter is doing a lot for them. <laughs> Resident Evil not doing shabby. Street Fighter, ah, but still doing pretty good, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh you know they they're making good decisions so i oh, i yeah. can't i can't fault them like all the stuff that they're pushing out are selling uh pretty well yep just waiting for that last one it's just come on <clears throat> all right we got all a right. voicemail uh so uh oh yeah i should probably put up the uh the old numberino there if it, yeah there we go so you can leave us a voicemail at uh 785-337-3805 and be featured on the show just like... What's up, guys? My name is Stephen O'Connell. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Hey, Stephen. A quick question for hey, you guys Steven. as far as the topic of discussion. I recently played through Ease 8, completed it about 52 hours. It was fun. One of the best games I've ever played. It's One of the good. dynamics that I thought was really cool was when you discover a new location, they really try to make it a point to create a memory regarding or surrounding the discovery of that location. Oh, Just yeah. really quickly, it'd be cool if you guys could briefly talk about in your favorite JRPG or action RPG, 
What was the most vivid experience that you can recall as far as discovering a location for the first time in any RPG and what kind of memory that was or what kind of impact it had on you? Love the show. Hit Point is amazing. You guys are great. Peace. Oh, thank wow. you so much. Wow. That that was that was really just compact. You know, it's got a lot of stuff going on in there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Derek. Do you want to kind of take turn to go at this? Because I've I've got multiple, like right off the top. Just <laughs> I okay. don't have to think very hard. I mean, the very first one that came to my mind is one step or giant step from uh, within one et of Earthbound. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I mean, first time you come across that first my sanctuary location within Earthbound for me was like. I mean, this was, again, my very first RPG, and I had finally defeated my very first boss, right? And I got to this sanctuary location, mm -hmm. and, you know, you walk up to it, and this song plays, like, everything just freezes, and it just gives you a moment to kind of bask in the glory of your accomplishments, and it's just, you know, oh, it's it's so nice. Um, that was That was one of my first moments that just kind of solidified it for me, and I was like, yeah, this, this is what it's all about, you know? Hmm. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, looking yeah, back no, at it, it's that's... a 16 bit, like it's just a giant footprint in the ground. It's not that impressive to look uh, at it now. But no, it, it's it, it, it's it's the emotion. It's, yeah. it's not about, you know, 100 pic pixel density. Right. It's I mean, there are yeah. there are so many moments within Earthbound that I could that I could also mention, like there was this black and white scene toward the end of the game. If you if you've played Earthbound, there's only one black and white scene. But it, it's like this flashback moment, and it's it's just, uh, it warms my heart, you know? And, and that also just totally just takes me straight back every time. Uh, the first thing that comes up to me is uh, Crawl and Trigger, uh, the, the, the end of time. Like, oh. you, uh, the, the uh, what is it called? The, it's yeah. not called the end of time. It's like, there's a, there's a word for it. But um, it might be the end of time. Uh, but but where like you know where you find the old man? I won't oh, yeah, say yeah. who Milky. that is because I mean, spoiler. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah uh, spoiler. <clears throat> but yeah, but a certain old man stands mm -hmm. under lampposts, and it's just you know there's just something about that point in time that really ties like the entire story together because it also serves as sort of like the nexus of like your time traveling right, yeah. and, and it made sense that it was at the very end point of time itself so um I, I just thought that there was so much like cool like things that they did with that that made so much sense and uh, to the young baku who is like super into this kind of like sci-fi kind of things i was like wow this is so cool i'm such a nerd but this is so cool <laughs> oh yeah i mean the first time that you yeah. go back to uh 600 ad uh, mm -hmm. the first time like you get sucked in through the wormhole and you end up there and you see the smoke around the ground or the fog yeah or Whatever's whatever that is that's just kind of shows you it's like, oh, this is like a wartime kind of yes. like it looks like night and it's just dark and broody and it looks dangerous and it's like oh yes. oh that's so cool. And going back to prehistoric times, like hey dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Like that that entire game. Uh, uh another one which mm -hmm. is basically the entire game is just Terranigma. Just the entire anytime you discover like a new city, it's just like Whoa, Oh my god, what's this? Like why oh. is and why civilization yes. just like push forward? Like, what's going on? Like, it just like when, what happened? Did you yeah. ever find the uh, the quintet staff within Terranigma when you were playing? I don't remember because it's so long ago. So it's a developer room basically that you can mm -hmm. find by reviving uh, Neo Tokyo. Um, mm -hmm. And when you go there, like regardless of when you go there, it's like there's the city of Tokyo, and you can go into the quintet building. And mm -hmm. there's a little kind of mini boss fight thing that you do, and you can talk to all the developers. Mm -hmm. Something about I might, not, visiting... I might not have done that because when I played oh. Terra Enigma, it was original on Super Nintendo in Japanese. I I might have missed a good oh, amount yeah. of like little like uh, uh, what's oh, all it called? the like secrets, yeah, Easter eggs and stuff. Yeah, there, sure. there were no guides. Mm -hmm. Okay, there were no yeah. guides. There was no um, internet. There was Old no internet Baku. at the time. Yeah, Old Man Baku talking. Um, and, and you know when I did replay it, I I don't think I played it all the way to completion because I think the save file got corrupted. It was like on an emulator, so yeah. You know. Oh, um, Baku! I think you just need to give it another go at some point. I mean, I think Square Enix should hurry up and remaster the game so I can play it. 
that would be really Square nice. Enix. And look, um, listen, it's on the warpath. It's like we talked about it. All the Super Nintendo game, all the PS1 game, they're all like, uh, you know, they're all game for mm -hmm. remake remasters. So I'm not losing hope that Terra Enigma could come back, right? So maybe yeah. HDTD. I don't know. I don't know. Just, How about? Um, I mean, this isn't. Enix. Some people, some people think it might think it's heresy to even mention this in the discussion, but um, Ocarina of Time, dude. The hall when high you enter Hyrule Field and you just open it up and you can see, like for the first time, this expanse that opens up before you. Later on, it's oh, like, yeah. oh yeah, there's this expanse with nothing in it. But uh, but back then, <laughs> it was like, oh my god, there's rolling hills and lush fields and uh, mm -hmm. trees and stuff that look as good as you know. Nintendo Switch games will in the future. <laughs> okay, that's, that's what, what, a, what a way what a way to dunk on the Switch. <laughs> just, wow. <laughs> no, um, I mean I was that's, that's really not dunking on the Switch. The Switch is excellent. <laughs> it's just it's dunking on uh, Pokemon. Um, God, which one was that? Arceus. Was Arceus. Was it Arceus that was gonna? No, no, no. It was the the one before that. Sword and Shield. The the open Sword field. Shield, that they yeah. Had. yeah. Yeah. Sword and Shield. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah yeah a lot of a lot of great memories uh I, I think you know what maybe maybe that's something that our the jrpg studs pretty well in general is um letting you see like these like new worlds uh oh yeah that you, you do. yeah they, they they have some ways of like concealing it and then once they show it to you it's just like uh you know you it makes you want to sing some aladdin you know <laughs> oh yeah because it's a whole new world i guess it's a whole new world yeah that's perfect <coughs> so yeah thank you so much for uh for steven for your voicemail and if anybody else would like to leave us a voicemail you may do so at 785-337-3805 i have verified that that is the actual correct phone number and uh and yeah, and you can be on the show. Otherwise, otherwise, like I said before, we will respond to all super chats at the end of the show. So uh, if you have any comments that cannot wait until the next voicemail gets played, uh, you have uh, you have options. Yes, so you do have options. We can move along now to games that are coming out this week, yes. and uh, we're gonna kick this off with one that uh, I've actually been pretty excited for uh, for a little while. It's from our friends at Retro. RP, uh, retro games, R E T R E A U X. I gotta love the, uh, I love the, <laughs> I love how they spelled it. I don't know why. It's just so posh and unnecessary, but great. Uh, anyways, they're the people who are behind, uh, Pillars of Dust a long while back. This very NES inspired RPG that I talked about in an episode of the game collection. And, mm. uh, and anyways, so these guys are making, uh, a Game Boy kind of Game Boy Color inspired RPG. Uh, that kind of play, takes place in this kind of post-apocalyptic world where you're like looking for scrap and stuff. I mean, I don't I don't know how much they show off in the trailer, but I I've spent a, a little bit of time with it. Maybe you yeah, know, keep your eyes bit. keep your eyes peeled because there may be a video coming out uh, later this week about it. Uh, but before the video, uh, the, before my Chrono Cross video that comes out on Friday, by the way, I, I forgot to mention that I have a I, my my Chrono Cross video is done. And it's been in early access for like a week, but it comes out on Friday. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But For a Vast Future is the name of the game, and it looks mm -hmm. really awesome. And I just want to take a look at the trailer together here. Yeah, you let's don't do mind. it. Because that comes it. out, by the way, it comes out tomorrow. Yes. Uh, so yeah, let's let's give this a look. Very timely. The music is such a banger, like all of it. Ah. And it comes with uh, a few different color palettes you can switch between. I personally like that default one where it's kind of like orangish and bluish. I'm That's... not going to lie. When I saw this, I just saw Saga. Uh-huh. I can totally see that, too. Yeah. It, it feels a little bit like um, kind of like a almost like a Fallout universe kind of mm -hmm. game, but, but done in a totally JRPG style <laughs> that would fit in. On... Oh, my God. Those color those oh, color <laughs> oh my god i know it's so good it's so authentic yeah you can like upgrade your gear and stuff and mm -hmm. increase your stats it's see various stats that you can spend your uh your, your stat points on it's so cool yeah, oh, wow yeah uh, there 
For a vast future. Yeah. <sighs> How many PC? It's the music is so good too. Yes. All right. Wow. So. Yeah. So uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that because. Uh, hang on. Pause. Pause. Thank you. <laughs> the oh, player. What's that, what's that sound? The player just wanted to keep from... going. So yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah. Decades of war in Sorelia ended in a stalemate, and the citizens are left to pick up the pieces. You play as Chell, who embarks on a cross-country trip to unravel the secrets of a missing generation. Along the way, she meets loyal comrades and otherworldly foes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, there it's coming go. out. Uh, it's coming out tomorrow, and uh, and I'm. I'm probably not going to have a video for it tomorrow. I I mm -hmm. wanted to. Maybe. We'll see what I can piece together. Um maybe Wednesday though. I'm yes. I'm I'm really I I got to be honest, I'm digging it. The music is mm. so good. The music sounded really good. Yeah. Now it's not yeah. like a huge like 60-hour RPG or anything. Expect something like a 10-hour game. Uh but I think it's going to be priced appropriately as well. So, uh yeah. Make sure you mm. check them out as well, as well as Pillars of Dust. Yeah. By by the way, by the way, just just so everyone knows, there 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 is a Switch version coming according to the developers in 2023. Oh. So yeah. yeah. Anyone nice. who does not PC Master Race, who hasn't gotten a Steam Deck, somebody who will, yeah. somebody with a, a really old computer that can can't even <laughs> run brand new Square Enix games. No, just, just straight up no computer. Just if you don't believe in computers, <laughs> only the Switch. Oh, you just want to play it on the go. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. it's, it's coming to Switch next year sometime. Gotcha. All right. So uh, uh, for the next one, we've got a game called uh, Soen, uh Dream Adventure. I, I don't know if I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, but this is uh, from the game, uh, from the Korean game developer, Pumpkin. Uh, it's another horror title that Baku just has to show Derek because it's Halloween and I still get to show horror games and it's not out of place. So let's take a look at the at the horror game. Yeah, horror let's game. Yeah. let's take a look. <laughs> love this. Thank you, Baku. You're welcome. I know you love horror games, so I'm just like making a point to find all the horror games I can. So on on Halloween, you decided to show me so on. Yes. <laughs> but um. <-ums. laughs> also, I, I I thought the the the. Oh, um, look at that art style. The art style is really interesting, and I wanted to show it off. Yeah, it it's a little. Uh, it's like paper crafty, doll kind, like paper yeah. mache kind of. Got a little bit of that, uh, you know, Coraline Nightmare Before Christmas kind of claymation yeah. aesthetic a little bit, uh, yeah, which it's... is really awesome. Baku and I were actually just listening to uh, Is This Halloween before the show started. Mm -hmm. oh, man. Now, this is a relatively short title. I've been told that it's like 46 hours, depending on how good you are with puzzles. Um, but it's a horror puzzle game. So Baku um, could finish it in like 30 hours? Yeah, probably. It's a palate cleanser. <laughs> uh, in this game, you will play a Soen, um, I, I presume it's Korean, uh, a young a girl who was uh, up in the middle of the night looking for her parents, but accidentally stumbles into a strange world made of toys and dolls. And she is struggling to find her parents and get the heck out of there. So uh, this game is actually immediately available as of the 28th. So, you know, only a couple of days ago. Yeah, only like what, one, two, three days ago. It became available on PC. So okay. you can get on Steam if that's something that you're interested in. I think there's like 20% off right now too. And, so and yeah, you said you know. and you said this one is gonna be four to six hours, right? Yeah, four to six hours. Yeah, not yeah. four hundred and twenty six hours. <laughs> 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 That'd be nuts. That <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I meant I meant as in like not forty six, you four to six. Okay. Four cool. to six, yes. Four okay. to six hours. Yeah. Cool, cool, Definitely. cool. That's awesome, right. actually. That that didn't look too spoopy, even for me. And I'm a no. Wimp. You got this. I you think, know, I think as long should... as it's as long as the game like ascribes to a you know horror for children sort of vibe. Oh yeah, I could. <laughs> I, I could think totally you should play definitely that. play it. I think right. I think you should definitely play it. All right. All right. Well, 
Uh, next up, we have an exciting little update to a game that I also kind of did an experience points video talking about the demo of it. Uh, so this is Shrine's Legacy. So uh, from the developer, uh, Shrine's Legacy is a top-down action RPG that, or sorry, action RPG adventure that plays like a combination of classic Super Nintendo games like Zelda, Final Fantasy, Illusion of Gaia, and Secret of Mana. Like Secret of Mana, you can play Shrine's Legacy in either single-player or in two-player in couch co-op mode. You can mm. also play online through uh, Parsec or like Steam Remote Play if your internet can handle it. Uh, and yeah, we're we're looking at like a trailer for like what the uh, what what is this kicks or this uh, this trailer for exactly? Is this like a a pre uh, the Kickstarter is already done, so um, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. But yeah, I think right. it's, it's a trailer. Yeah. All right, let's check out the uh, the old trailer here. Yeah. So what Look what that got font. my attention for this game is the uh, the fact that you can actually play this co op, and we're always talking about wanting like a co op RPG. Yeah. Especially playing like um. Uh, you know, online too, which is pretty interesting. Uh, they brought up like you know, Secret of Mana. I'm just like, huh, Secret of Mana, eh? <laughs> you uh -huh. got my attention already. Yeah, Unite yeah. Eight Elements, huh? That sounds familiar. Some really, <laughs> some really awesome puzzles. Hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, I've I've seen a lot of this in the development section of our uh, of my Discord server, which mm -hmm. uh, I think you can probably find a link to that in the description. Yeah. Uh, but um but this game legitimately is really awesome based off of the uh based off of the demo that i played of it the i haven't played the co-op portion of it you know because that requires uh, a co-pilot but it's really fun and i'm excited to check out the full thing when it i cannot available. wait yeah i mean it's it's like the visuals of Stardew Valley, but honestly, it feels like the gameplay of like Illusion of Gaia. The the puzzles yes. that go into like unlocking your progression forward. Yeah, it's. Oh, oh it's got especially the, it's that got dash the, mechanic. Uh, what you call it? It's got the um, it's got the Terranigma attack. <laughs> that yes, dive attack. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should mention that. I don't know. Something about it just, mm, you know. Something about it just mm, so, looks very familiar. Mm. So, yeah, they had a successful Kickstarter um, last year, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the big news here is that, uh, yeah, they're expecting it to come out next year in yeah, quarter Q2. two. Yeah. So, yeah, you can wish list it over on Steam now and you can get it when it comes out. So, yes. that's that's the big news is, uh, yeah. They're, they're they're narrowing in on an actual full release. I can't wait. That actually looks a lot of fun. You, no, and, and here's the thing. The, the other day we were just talking about like, hey, maybe we can find an RPG where we can co-op online and we can stream it. And we're like, fun. yeah, but there aren't any RPGs where you can just co-op online. Like we, we talked about it, right? And then mm -hmm. and I, I saw this. I was like, wait a minute. Did you say we can play this co-op online? Did you say you're an RPG that we can so, co-op online? <laughs> yeah, but it requires it requires like parsec or it's or couch co-op. It's it's basically it's couch co-op, but you can figure it out online if you. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah we'll we can figure it out. We can. We got this. We both work in IT. We got this. Yeah, and I got yeah. and I got I got fiber <laughs> internet. I I'm. I'm we have we have fiber internet. Yeah. Yeah. We got this. <laughs> We could we could stream in full <laughs> HD to each. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> All right. Sweats um, in IT. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, All right. Next up, we've got uh, Harvest Stella, which is uh, Square Enix's first attempt to a farm simulator RPG, uh, and it will be released on uh, November fourth on Switch and PC via Steam. Uh, your story will begin in the middle of what they're calling Quietus, uh, a calamity that comes with each change of season and threatens all life, which sounds 
like incredibly like a world I don't want to live in. Can you imagine yeah. like a, a thing called quietness just comes every time like a season change or like oh crap that everyone might just die now. Like um and, and this uh, I is think the that's called climate change. <laughs> it's <so> called climate. <laughs> Here's the description for quietus. Uh, crops you, wither and you are, the dust of death prevents people from even walking outside. So what does that sound yeah. like to you? <laughs> that sounds like Kansas tornado season. <laughs> Right. But but every change of season, just like yes, ugh. yes, it, every change of season, every time, it, every change of season, every time it goes from cold to warm oh, and warm, warm to, to cold. cold. Yep, it's just oh jeez. Yep. Um, it is said that the duration of quietus is getting longer each. Yep. No nope, climate change. Yep. Yep. That's that's, that's, that's climate it's just change. A, it's just an analogy for climate <laughs> change. <laughs> we do have a trailer for it. This is the second trailer. I don't think we've shown this. So, and take a look again. All right, let's check this out. A planet with four giant crystals called Seas Light. Mm. Mm. Giant crystals Seas because Square Enix. Hey, I mean, and bestows its blessings. if it ain't so broke, instead of don't the fix four it. elements, now it's the four seasons. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, man. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 my, my brain doesn't care about MacGuffins at this point. They've weeded everybody out who does. <laughs> you know, the characters actually look pretty good, except for like the, the human ones, like have like an odd proportion still. Oh, quietus. Mm -hmm. Everything just dies. The portraits look really good. Yeah, I think it's like they have slightly too wide of hips. That kind of makes it look disjointed. It's just so weird looking. <laughs> I mean, that's, I don't know. They kind of remind me of Igus from uh, Persona 3. Because she's a robot and she legitimately just has like joints there. Like like mechanical right. joints. Like functional reasons. Yeah. And that's kind of what this reminds me of. Like. See, look, I mean, the, the battle, the battle actually looks pretty good because, you know, Square Enix. So you just got to farm while you're not in an RPG. I mean, that's cool, though. Yeah, I, I feel like this is not a simulation with RPG. This is an RPG with simulation. So, I mean, in it a way, also has the flying like, ship. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, this is I mean, RPGs have done that for ages, though. This time, yeah. though, it looks like they're just not half assing it. Yeah, you know, because it's actually going to be a core mechanic. Yeah, and not like a silly little side thing to get like one ultimate weapon. Because I mean, who who really did like the who really loved the farming mechanic in uh, in Swicked Two? I mean, nobody mm. played Swicked Two for <laughs> that aspect, right? Like, sure, you could, but mm -hmm. was that really why? Is that is that really why you no no I mean it was just yeah. a cool thing that you had there in your base and it was one of those things is like oh cool they made that anyways I'm gonna ignore that and I'm gonna you know start fighting some enemies again or or the the cooking side of uh, of that where you could have like a chef and stuff it's like I'm sure that somebody loved those things mm -hmm. I mean it wasn't for me uh, I, yeah there were there were aspects I enjoyed like the fishing mechanics. Mm -hmm. Oh, so get into his fishing was something to be desired. But I mean, regardless, like a lot of RPGs have these sort of like farming and sim mechanics that were kind of like dabbled yeah. in. But to see yeah. somebody actually like, yeah, take it to the next step, kind of like Rune Factory, mm -hmm. you know, that's it's good. The more people that do that, the better. It just means that they're they're I, mean, I will say, though the more you dive into that, the harder it is to do a good job at both. So I That's hope true. The, the the trick is getting a good balance, right? Yeah, it's true. This this is just an add on. Uh, this is not just an add on, hopefully, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, I pre-purchased it for a friend who is really big on uh, like farming simulator kind of game. So uh, we'll see how she likes that. All right. All well, right. Speaking of games with excellent balance, uh, Doraemon, <laughs> Story of Seasons, Friends of the Great Kingdom is the newest Story of Seasons title featuring the full cast of the Doraemon, uh, show. So, Doraemon, Story of Seasons, Friends of the Great Kingdom is coming to PlayStation 5. If you know, if you happen to have a PS5, <laughs> I'm not judging you. 
uh, Nintendo Switch and PC via Steam. Uh, and it's coming out on the 2nd of November. So just yes. a couple of days from just a yeah. couple of days from now. Very uh, soon. Now, if anybody has like forgotten who Doraemon is or what Story of Seasons is, here's the trailer of it. Um, yeah. Quick because, trailer. Yeah. Story of Seasons. If you uh, if you recall, once upon a time, we had this game called Harvest Moon. And then on the Nintendo 64, that series turned to garbage. I mean, after 64. <laughs> after 64, it turned to garbage because, um, because they basically just had somebody else start making them. But the people who made the originals continued to make story of seasons games in japan so yeah this is that i think this might be a fun game for kids too oh i mean isn't that kind yeah. of like half the appeal of doraemon like he, he is like uh -huh. a childhood show character well i mean that's what we say about pokemon and then <laughs> we have a lot of grown-ups playing that you know, so you know i i, I didn't mean yeah. that in a, i didn't mean that in like a judgy sort of way but oh neither did i but i'm just saying like you know there, there's the intended audience and then there's the uh actual audience <laughs> but i'm saying that. like i think this game is probably the intended audience are our kids so okay uh and I... and i think uh it's pretty nice it's a nice wholesome game um to 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 get kids to learn the hard works of farming and doraemon because oh, I, I don't know how hard they actually have to work because Doraemon's got all the tools. So I'm not convinced that they're going to be working all too hard. <laughs> um, but anyways, yes, there there it is. I love Doraemon, man. I was going to say, thanks for the reminder. I, I, I've been butchering uh, the, the name Doraemon. Sorry oh, about no. that. Yeah, you, 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 I old, think you were pretty good. Good old Doraemon. Doraemon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like oh. in Finding Nemo. Yes, exactly. All right. Well, so now that we're done with the upcoming releases, now it's time to talk about game announcements, uh, starting with yet more farming simulators, because I've heard that you guys really like farming simulators. So I like farming it, simulators. Yeah. 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 Just like how I like fishing and Chrono Cross. Yeah. Wait, yeah. You like fishing in Chrono Cross? No, and. No wonder in. you hate that game, dude. That's so <laughs> weird. Is there fishing in Chrono Cross? I don't even know. Yeah, was there? If you have to ask, you'll never know. <laughs> I avoid fishing like in basically every JRPG I play. I know. Um, but uh Out. I don't think Out. Yeah. Out. <laughs> yeah. And Blitzball. Forget Blitzball. You want me to play a sport in an RPG? Like, look, listen, there's a reason why I'm not picking up like Madden. Okay. I, how dare you? I've heard that Blitzball is fun, but how dare you put sports? <laughs> in my jrpg listen okay. okay i hear you baku but how do you feel about uh, how do you feel about gambling mini games like, like i, I don't like machine? gambling period so what the in, in, you in life the in, just, in how real dare life you? oh my god and, and in game <laughs> i don't like gambling <laughs> <laughs> i like taxing i like taxing uh uh casinos though i'm, I'm all for legalization <laughs> but i would I, I don't like gambling myself i'm though, so. i'm just i'm just not uh yeah, yeah. oh i know don't worry. i know <laughs> <laughs> but but just to put it out there it's it has nothing against the games I, it's oh just, yeah real I, gambling yeah, is it's not the is mechanics for yeah yeah, real gambling's yeah. for suckers, but RPG gambling, that's my jam, man. Oh, no, I like RPG gaming, uh, RPG gambling where I can, like, abuse the system. Where yeah, I can just, like, totally, like, Save cheat them. the thing. Yeah, yes, I, that, that's, that's, that's what I, I like about it. That's how you that win. Like. <laughs> <laughs> the fishing, eh? come on. Come on. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, well, skipping out on fishing is not an option in this uh, title uh, called, guess what, Story of Seasons. Uh, a Wonderful Life. So I believe this hey. is a... Uh, remake of the very first game in modern consoles. Um, wait, wait, and the first, as in the the Super Nintendo Harvest Moon? I believe so. I believe so. I believe what? so. I believe so. Don't quote me on this one because uh, that's not part of the script. I just remember this okay. being a, yeah, just... like a remake or remaster of like one of the older titles. But uh, here here is the actual news part that I have vetted. Okay, so okay. quote this. Uh, Exceed Games announced the upcoming Story of Seasons, uh, A Wonderful Life, won't be a Switch exclusive. Uh, it will also simultaneously be released on PS5, Xbox Series X, and PC. So, uh, don't worry if you are like Mr. Invalid and you just hate the Switch for some odd reason. You have other ways to play Story of Seasons. So, here is a quick trailer for all of you. 
All right, well, let's check it out. A switch hater. A switch hater. Oh, switch man. hater. I need graphics very similar to uh, what we just saw from Dolaimon. Probably the same engine and in, in all. Forgotten Valley. Huh. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is the original game. Pretty sure. I'm willing to be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's the original game. I said I was going to look it up before we start the show, but I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> That's all right. I'm sure. Yeah, I I'm made sure it a we'll point. Yeah, I was writing it. I was like, you know, I should go look that up. Oh, man. You know, personally speaking, I think yeah. that they probably would have knocked it out of the park had they made it in like the story of or the 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 Link's Awakening style. Mm. Fixed camera perspective, you know, little cute kind of character, like kind of chibi art style. Grid based. It'd make it pretty, pretty easy, but I don't know. That doesn't this is look bad. cute. It is cute, yeah. This is freaking cute. And some sad ones too. I think they know their I know they I think they know the audience. Like these are the kind of like things that people want for like a farming simulation game. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I like, think you're probably really right. hitting the formula. Yeah. Say farewells. Oh no, she's off to college. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought it was a safe farewells because he's gonna die. Oh no, that was the daughter. Because <laughs> he, he's so old, he's oh, he's out of college he's now. <laughs> he's he's out of college now, and he's wow. about to die. Never he, too late, man. Listen, if you're getting your college degree at eighty, like, do more power to you. That's crazy. No, no, no. Because I was making a joke about how in so many RPGs, it's like, oh, like what was it, Sid from Final Fantasy VII? He's like, mm -hmm. I'm. <laughs> They're calling him old man and stuff. Like he's got a foot in the grave, but he's like almost thirty. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. They're just you know, basically <sighs> in anime, you're either in high school or you're dead and dying. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well, anyways, so that, that was story of seasons, a wonderful life. So, yes, this game is coming out in summer of 2023 again. Not just the Switch, but also PS5, Xbox Series X and pc there you have it awesome all right well we've got uh another little one here uh it's developed and published by wodan uh is, is uh, i hope i said that right uh, i hope so I, I hope you said it right too <laughs> it's, it's from it's a game called shinonome it is mm -hmm. a new roguelike game that will have you play as yono a novice onyo student onyo mm -hmm. onyo yeah. onyo student onyo. who who will yeah. fight through to escape a haunted house in the Japanese Edo province. Baku, you did this on purpose. You're making Edo me period. talk about a... Oh, oh, yeah. The, Edo, the word that Edo you period. mispronounce is an English word. You pronounce all the Japanese correctly. What, what did I say? Uh, a pre, pre, I think you said prefecture? Oh, pre, pro, province. province. Oh, my yeah. bad. Edo, period. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> So you, I, I got distracted by the fact that you're having me talk about a ghost story game, Baku. How dare you? Okay, let's check this I out. I didn't have you do anything. <laughs> you made me do this. <laughs> oh, yo, you love horror games. Yo, no. Oh, wait, hang on. I love horror on. game. On a rainy night, her master bids her visit a country estate <laughs> where every room brims with evil. They really should hire you just to do these voiceovers. Nom nom nom. <laughs> Uh, nope. <laughs> Wisps. Very aptly named. 
okay, this is kind of looking a little bit, I mean, obviously it's because of like the Edo time period, but it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like, um, oh, because she's a shrine maiden, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'm thinking of uh, Pocky and Rocky, you know? Oh, yeah. She kind of looks like, yes. kind of looks like Pocky. But, I uh, want to play Pocky. Oh, that's, I think that's when we talked about playing co-op too. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We did talk, there was that oh, new okay. one. Yes. I think that one, new one sold like decently well for, for what it is. So I saw some reviews. Uh, they, they were pretty good. This looks like one of those ga kinds of games where you cannot run a at all. Like, it's just like walk around. It seems that way. You can make them fight each other. She's like, well, you know, monsters are gonna... Ooh, death takes you. Death it's takes like, you. Yeah, these monsters are like fighting to the death in front of my very eyes, but I can't be bothered to like do more than a slight power walk. Let's just, let's just let them um, let them deal with it. <laughs> Whatever would become of her. Whatever oh, there you go. will become... Oh, whoa, whoa, hold on. Look at that art. It's actually really nice art. It's really nice. Yeah. Oh, so she's like a, a shrine maiden, but she's got like some of those like samurai pauldrons or samurai whatever. Samurai gears. Yeah. That's pretty rad. That's that's yeah. super cool. She no no me. There you go. All right. Well, yeah. So uh, that's currently in early access on Steam and uh, or it will be rather on the 11th of the 11th. Singles yes. Day? Is that is that what you told me it was? In, uh... I think 11, 11 Singles Day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah in yeah. China. And uh, so there's no full release date as of yet, though. But early but, access coming pretty soon. Looks pretty spooky. Looks yeah, kinda, looks pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, De Derek approves, and you guys know Derek's great taste in horror games. I mean, hey, you've you've seen me review uh, Corpse Party. I'm waiting for you to play Resident Evil. Yeah. Well. You yeah. Can, you can keep on waiting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we got a game that's uh, a little bit more actiony. It's called um, Ruby Aerofilm. So this new side-scrolling action game from developers Way Forward and Arc System Works, who, mm. of course, you guys know from all like the nice-looking fighting game, uh, is based on the Ruby animated series. Uh, it's just got a new release date and a new trailer. So let's take a look at that trailer. All right, let's give it a gander here. Oh, it's in conjunction with Rooster Teeth. Oh, oh, of course, because I mean, of teeth. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Ruby. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Hope not. <sighs> well, I'm ready for a nap. It's a good thing we were here. I don't know how these people live so far from. Look out! Oh, I'm hitting that panic button right now. That's all part of the Huntress gig. And you're next, Buster. Weiss! I'm not a big fan of the giant head, like art like chibi oh, like it's, character it's like half chibi it's what, what do they call it's, that like i don't know what to call it so yeah it's but like, like it's like a yeah one one quarter of the the body height is the the head yeah it doesn't bug me too much uh i watched a lot of anime as a kid and a lot of video games kind of had that proportion like when i was I, I, younger I, I, but I, I, I do think that if the game plays fluid and, you know, because, yeah. like, when you play, like, me something like Mega Man, like, mm -hmm. as long as it's really fluid and, and fun to traverse through the platform, uh, I, I can overlook anything. Like, it if it's a fun me, game. It kind of reminds me of, like, the, the proportions of, like, Pokemon, the original series. It does, yes. You know, yeah, so not a fan of the aesthetics. I feel like they could do, probably have done better. But uh, again, if, I mean, if the, outside, the game is fun. In, you in know. the cutscenes, it, it, it goes back to like normal proportions. I'm not too like worried about it personally. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I'm also not like a, obviously I'm not a big like Ruby person because I, I just never took the time to watch it, actually, I guess. Yeah. Well, I, some people love it. So cool. I, I I like the I like the first season. I don't know. It, it it went downhill a little bit for me, but then I I haven't really watched like all the newest stuff. So it, it could be really good for all I know. And but the new anime that came out was pretty good. So there was that. Yeah. I mean the the, the longevity of the series at this point is honestly very surprising. Like yeah, it's exactly. Still going. It's been what like ten years. You know what? It's wow. Yes. I remember yeah. watching a trailer in college. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there. Wow, this is a really cool scene. I, I think oh, <clears throat> I forget. I forget what it was. Um, 
was it red versus blue? I think that was like a thing that they had done. Way oh yeah, back. yeah, yeah, yeah. Red yeah. Blue. It, it mm-hmm. kind of started with that, and then there's like Dead Fantasy, and then uh, and then this, and then I remember watching like the first Ruby trailer, and I was just blown away with the like uh, choreography, right? Yeah. Uh, and it was during... all by uh, a, a boy Monty, and yeah. you know, yeah. But during that anyways, era, anyways, <clears throat> during that era, I was way more into like the ScrewAttack.com kind of kind of stuff rather than. Mm-hmm. Uh, rooster teeth that was like i don't know like at, at the time i felt like online content had like this this competitive nature to it where it's like oh no rooster teeth sucks <laughs> i like screw it or at least or at least that was like how it was like how i felt back in the day mm-hmm. but uh you know I'm, I'm glad that we kind of came away from that i was all college humor all the time because i was oh, in God. college and it was okay uh, yeah, yeah, that was like that. That was like that. The, 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 the before it was the YouTube the channel. It was yeah, yeah. That good, was like the, yeah. the great time for for college humor. Um. All right. All right. So, so we got this, this game in. is coming out oh. in November fifteenth. Uh, on PS four, five, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, S, Switch, PC via Steam. So basically every modern platform. Oh, cool. Yes. All right. Well, all right. we have another one here. Uh, that we've got a, a release date here for Wolong Final uh, Fallen Dynasty Team Ninja Team Ninja uh, just announced the date for their newest action title. It's uh well before we talk about the the release date, let's take a look at the trailer to just get ourselves a little refresher. It's just a refresher. What what's this Wolong? What are you talking about? This is such a cool show by the or not show but trailer. I remember yeah. We compared this to a different game that we're also looking at at the same time. I forgot what it was. We're looking at this and we're looking at like another game. Yeah, I think the other was not by Team Ninja. Yeah, (laughs) I forgot what we were looking at. It was like another game in the Bakamatsu period. Yeah, it was in Japan. I just can't remember right now what it was. But I, I recall that they were both awesome, and this looks really awesome. Oh, was that other one the one where you build stuff? I need to go back to my notes to see like which which one we talked about when we talked about this last time. There were like three of these, I think. Yeah, but this I don't looks, think this. I mean, this looks amazing. I mean, Team Ninja, I, you know, like amazing is sort of their standard. So. Um, yeah, but, uh, how well does it actually play? We shall see. Um, we'll find out. We'll find out. So, so. uh, yeah, that's coming out on the 3rd of March, 2023. Uh, it's coming yeah. out on PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and PC. And, uh, you know, if, if you're broke, it's also coming out on PS4, <laughs> I guess. You know, if, if you're into that sort of thing. Okay, so I, I'm pretty sure. I, 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 again, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure this is one of those titles where, like, if you get the PS4 version, you can get a free upgrade into PS5. Again, don't quote me on this, but I, I, I yeah, think I vaguely check that remember you. that being the yeah. case. Uh, but I, it's just there's a lot of games out there that are. Uh, uh, well, my my the point I was trying to make is there's a lot of games out there now that are uh, you know that also has that game on PS5, and you get the PS4 version, you have like a free upgrade path so like i i think it's really nice yeah. uh i think they're, they're, they're that that's like a compromise so that they can continue to sell these games even though like not everyone can get their hands on a ps5 at a reasonable price yeah um oh trust know. me i know that all too well by the way anybody who who is just joining us uh that was not a dig at anybody who uh doesn't have a ps5 that's Oh, that's yeah. a self that's a self dig <laughs> yeah no absolutely no i mean the, the the reality is the reality is like ps5 is hard to get your hands on even if you were willing to you know pay that exuberant amount uh you know for for ps5 it's just it's just hard to get i have heard i have yeah, it's heard gotten you can a lot buy them easier. from from playstation yeah. directly i've heard yeah but, it's, uh, it's gotten easier for sure but yeah. it, it's still not exactly like oh yeah i'm just gonna stop by walmart and pick one up or like i'm gonna stop by best buy and just pick one up uh not quite there yet but hopefully within the next year uh, it'll be a lot more accessible 
Yeah. So, we'll get there. Uh, yeah. So speaking of PS5, uh, I've got another game here uh, that's coming only exclusive on PS5, at least for now. Uh, and that is uh, actually two games uh, that has been announced during the Grand Zella um, and and uh, sorry uh, Nipponichi uh, Software America live stream event. So during the event, which happened like three, four days ago, the company has announced the uh, two R-Type games uh, that are coming to the West. The first of which is R-Type Final 3 Evolved, uh, the newest in the shoot 'em up series uh, uh, that is R-Type. This title will feature exclusive stage design by none other than Kazuma Kujo, uh, hmm. new ships, um, a multiplayer mode, and much more. So I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of like surprises they have for us. Now, this is the title that is coming to PlayStation 5 only for now in March 2023, which is actually surprising to me that a shoot 'em up game, which you wouldn't think takes a whole lot of like graphics processing is only being announced yeah. for PS5. It's like I find that strange. So I I'm going to bet that they're going to release it on other consoles like PS4 and and PC and the Switch. But maybe, uh, but or at maybe, least for now, or maybe yeah. this is PS5 exclusive in order to satisfy some sort of contract with Sony that they oh, have to have. You know what? True, that could be the case. That could, could, I mean, could be there could be some you know uh exclusive content uh stuff that they need to fulfill so who knows don't don't yeah. count your chickens it could be one or the other um, yeah but uh man yeah but, but i gotta for say now yeah when i first read this i'm a little disappointed that when i first read this for some reason my mind thought that i read uh f-zero tactics <laughs> instead of uh r-type tactics and i was thinking yes well that sure is out of left field but i'm pretty excited well i'm oh, still man. i'm still pretty excited but it's not out of left field as far as i had uh suspected uh let's take a look at this trailer uh, uh, yeah listen if f-zero tactics ever come out i will i will personally bombard your inbox if f-zero <laughs> tactics ever come out okay yeah yeah stay yeah, get subscribed so you'll see when <laughs> F Zero Tactics gets announced. Yeah, this is this is just a teaser trailer, so don't expect anything. Yeah, that like this is this is it. It's just a teaser trailer. It's got like wow, basically that was, nothing to it. Yeah, it, that I was, know, right? Wow, informative. Wow, that's that's impressive. Wow. The whole thing. Wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the, the whole well, trailer I, is I, twenty five <laughs> seconds, but it was showing logos by fit by by. It was showing nothing but logos by. Oh God, what was the timestamp? Okay, so there's the title screen, mm -hmm. and then, and then at oh, what's the nine seconds in, it's it's showing like disclaimers and stuff, legal fine print. <laughs> <laughs> so it's less than ten seconds of like trailer actual okay. anything. Yeah. yeah, it reminds uh, me a bit of the time when uh, when Bethesda really didn't have anything going on for one of the E3s. So they're like, uh -huh. well, time to announce the the fact that we're making the Elder Scrolls Six, and they showed us like. This vaguely fantasy, like sky, like, uh, like sweep over of some mountains and stuff, mm -hmm. and then and then the Elder Scrolls Six. That and was... That's it. And, and they don't even give you like the the tagline or tell you where it is or nothing. That you got, nope, you get nothing. nothing. It's like at that point they basically just announced that we're thinking about making another uh, another uh, Elder Scrolls. We're game. considering a new game. Maybe. Just want to show you, you know, the the logo. Maybe but that's not not even. <laughs> But that's we'll okay. Go. That's okay. So I mean, we pretty much know probably yeah. what to expect from an R-type tactics kind of game, more well, or less. Well, this this is this is well, you're definitely getting a little bit more info here. Uh, so the R-type tactics cosmos is actually going to be completely remade um, in Unreal Engine Five. Now the game is based off the PSP tactical RPG titles R, R type uh, tactics one and two. So this is a complete remake. Uh, the two games are coming to PS5, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC in the summer of 2023. I am not exactly sure if they're going to bundle it together into like a single, like, you know, game called 
uh, all type tactics one two cosmos or are mm-hmm. they releasing like two separate game one cosmos and two cosmos but we'll see uh this actually also marks the first time that our type tactics 2 uh is available uh, uh officially in the west uh, they released oh. the, the first game in psp but they never released the second game so this is going to be the first time uh we will have an official way to play the game um so yeah Pretty cool stuff uh, for all the tactical and sci-fi nerds out there. Um, I, I I really like R Type as a shoot 'em up. I've actually never played R Type Tactics despite have yeah. uh, despite being a big tactical RPG fan and like an R Type. I actually never played the type game, so maybe this time it'll change. Uh, maybe I'll play it this time. All right. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll see. Uh, so mm-hmm. now it's time for dun da 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 da. Industry news industry news <laughs> i don't know you why paid for voice changer you gotta you gotta I d- use it i mean yeah that's that's true i gotta get my money's worth out of this yes thing. <laughs> <laughs> this, this this couple you know uh, at the beginning of uh covid this was uh as expensive as a ps5 in some circles so excuse you know, me <laughs> yeah the, the full size bought a ps5 the, um, well no I mean, that was before the, the PS5 was available, I think, at the beginning fair. of COVID, right? Yeah. I don't know. Anyways. I don't know how long the PS5 has been out at this point. T- time is a blur. It's all... It's all uh, yes, crazy, right? it really is. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. All right. All so right. let's move along to some industry news. And I'll, I'll kick us off with this first bit here. Um, so uh, Neo 2, PS4, and 5 versions are... Uh, coming to playstation plus in november 2022 so yes yeah hey that's awesome sony announced it during uh their uh yeah that the games are coming yep (laughs) are you having trouble reading (laughs) uh yeah i I, I was trying to to yeah yep something was covering up part of the screen because i have it highlighted so it's like oh no (laughs) yeah okay so yeah sony announced that uh their november 2022 uh, pl- uh, PS Plus Essentials titles will be Neo 2 for PS4 and PlayStation mm-hmm. 5. PS4 yes. owners can get their standard version, while PS5 owners can get the remastered version. Uh, yes. The other two games are Heavenly Bodies and Lego Harry Potter Collection. I'm actually looking forward to Lego Harry Potter Collection. It is one of those games that looks fun, but I would never buy with money. And here it is uh, free because I have you know, PlayStation Plus. I'm like, I'm sure. actually strangely looking forward to Harry Potter collection. <laughs> but also Neo, because I, I don't have Neo too. So, you know, get the remastered version on my on PS5. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> Mr. Moneybag's over here with his fancy PS5. PS Plus connection. Oh, I was just going to say PS Plus uh, you know, <laughs> subscription. With the PS Plus. <laughs> who's, who's got Who's got time for online subscriptions, man? I, you know, okay, here's the thing. Like, so I found one of those like online deals where it's like, oh, yeah, you can get like 10 months of um, PS Plus for with this code for this price, like just dramatically like cheaper. Mm-hmm. So I went with that. So I had like three years of like PS Plus for like an obscene, like an obscene amount of discount. And that's the only reason why I have PS Plus. I would not have it otherwise because I just don't, I don't use anything from that function. I don't do yeah. cloud save because I have local backups. Like I just I just don't do anything. But I will say that uh, the cloud save feature is useful if you have PS4 and PS5 because if you want to play PS4 game on your PS5, guess what? You can just load that save straight from the cloud and it's like just mix, you know, moving your PS4 game onto the PS5 a lot easier. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing I use it for. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. I legit yeah. just don't have any subscriptions currently ongoing with a PS Plus or anything like that, or or Nintendo Switch Online. Mostly because like I play one console at a time for like mm-hmm. a month or two at a time. So it's like, do I really <laughs> like? Can I really commit to like getting my money's worth out of this if I'm only playing PlayStation Four for like? Ooh, two months out of the entire year right right i I can't i can't gauge that i can't predict that so it doesn't make sense for me but for other people it does for sure 
Yeah, I mean, you know, before the show, we were talking about um, Star Wars and Six, um, and and how uh, I mean, heck, actually, I saw Rain Time in there talking about Star Wars and Six, and Derek and I were reading the chat and we were talking about Star Wars and Six, and it, it seems like a lot of folks are having issue with the PC version, but oh, not yeah, yeah. the console version. So I was just making a point of saying, hey, you know, I've always had trouble with JRPGs playing well on pc at least uh, it long. just yeah it just there's always something and then you know eventually you get like not not the game company but the community will patch it and mod it and it will play fine yep. but whether or not that happens or when that happens the quality of which the patch is like you know made you know that's <laughs> that's anyone's guess but they play perfectly fine on console so I'm just like, look, if you're gonna get Star Wars and Six, get on console. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and and same thing with um some of these other games too. Like that's the only reason why I still support consoles is because I can get a pretty flawless experience, even if it's not like the yeah. craziest you know, graphics possible, right? Yeah. When you make a game for PC, you have to make it work with so many different iterations of console combinations yeah. or uh, mm -hmm. uh, hardware combinations. Yeah. When, when it's for consoles, like you have a much narrower scope of things oh, yeah. you have to make sure it works on. So yeah, and it's a tighter QA too because th there are just less things to check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and and I I relish that like very polished experience. So yeah, consoles not going anywhere as long as you have people like me supporting them uh sorry that was the that was kind of a tangent but uh anyway so uh Stick we've to got the script, of course, how, how dare you never even if i wrote it <laughs> <laughs> oh i don't know who wrote this trash but oh my god it's dribble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, we've got some news from Idea Factory International. Uh, so can can we switch over to uh, my uh, screen really quick? Oh, if we show must. Us off. Yes, we must. All right. What, what do you got? Do you want to zoom so, in a little? Uh, uh, so Idea Factory International teases uh, an announcement for November 2nd. Uh, they, they have a very enigmatic tweet with the hashtag follow the cat along with the date so you can see the date with uh, just one eye emoji because we mm. don't know what happened to the other one and follow the cat so let's watch what does uh, it follow the cat can you zoom uh, in zoom in yes actually i would do you one better oh full screen yes footsteps is there and, is there audio oh yeah, I can't oh hear barely it's okay. just random footsteps and a cat that just flashes by and that's it that's, that's okay <laughs> well the, the cat went to the right so is there anything to the right of uh of the video no no not really okay no well no. i tried we tried to follow it but we eh, anyways yeah that's the thing uh and um there, there are no additional details whatsoever other than that this will not be an ultimate title I'm so sorry all the ultimate game fans uh it seems like this may be well not ultimate game they okay. made it a point to say this is not an Otome game. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, they're like, just in case you're wondering. Oh, yeah, here it is. Not <laughs> Otome at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, li listen, I, I'm all for Otome game, like, uh, you know, fans, but not this time, okay? Not this time. All right. So, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and move along here to uh, a little bit of additional news here. Yes. Uh, so this one comes uh, from Armed Fantasia. Uh, they've shared a five-minute English subtitled composer interview with yes. Michiko Naruke. Uh, yes. So are you excited for Armed Fantasia, guys? Because while you are hyping responsibly, you can watch this video. And uh, yeah, it's complete <laughs> with English subtitles. Links yes. are in the description down below. Yes. That's it. Yep. Don't, don't watch it now. I mean, but, I was gonna say like I could, I could, we could watch it together if you want. It's got English subtitles. I could do the I voiceover. Mean, if you want to watch it, I'm down to watch it. But it's five minutes long. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch it. I'll watch it after the fact. But um, yeah, probably, probably. Not I, I watched it before, and I, I've got to say that I really like these little like Q and A. It's kind of like a Q and A style with uh, developers and yeah. composer, and like you just kind of like get to pick their brain a little bit about their creative process. I really like those kind of things, so I want to make sure you guys know that that's available for you to look at. Um, awesome. Okay, 
So uh, next up, uh, in a recent email interview between Noisy Pixel, uh, so credit to them, and the Star Ocean development team, which was the reason why we talked about Star Ocean a little bit. Um, and, and this is actually on the thumbnail. So uh, during the, so during the interview, uh, Noisy Pixel asked about the possibility of Star Ocean's second evolutions uh, for the PS4 port to come to the West. And mm -hmm. as you may or may not know, uh, Square Enix actually released a PS4 port. I mean, so a PS4 uh, yeah. version of um, second first evolution first yeah, on PS4. Uh, first, what? Well, we got first departure here in the states. No, no, I, I was going to talk about Japan. Oh, okay. Yeah, Japan, they have yes. second evolution in Japan, but yeah. not in the West for whatever the heck reason. Like the game is fully done, you just gotta do a couple of things. I'm think is still easier than making a whole new game. But I digress, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So uh, they were just like, you know, just out of the left field. What's the possibility looking like? And in response, the development team said, well, we would absolutely appreciate it if fans were vocal with their wishes. The more oh. vocal they are, have the we more just... likely it would reach the executives. Oh, da, have da, da, we da, just da, da, not da, da, been da, da. loud enough? Oh, we just haven't been loud enough, it sounds like. Is that all? Is, is that, that all? That is all. Because, that is all it is. <laughs> because I think we can get kind of loud. We Guys, could get very loud. If you want, if you want Star Ocean, Star Ocean 2 uh yeah it's time to get loud this Second is evolution this is PS4. them this is yeah. them saying hey let our executives know that you want this because i know you do and i do too it's a great game it was fantastic <laughs> it was yes. fantastic on ps1 and it's going to be fantastic on ps4 when it comes a, over as well a lot of people say the second game is like the best one mm -hmm. like it, like i mean i yeah, I personally you know? like the second game a lot. Okay. Uh, I'd actually never played the first one. I have it on PS4. I bought it on like discount. But I like the second game was the one that started it off for me. And then the third and fourth and then fifth. And, and now here we are. But like the second game, that's like the one that I remember. So I'm just like, dude, mm -hmm. executive Square Enix, if you're listening to right now, we want this. Like, make no mistake. You know, like, it's if... not a maybe. It's a no. Yeah. Yes, please. You, yeah. You've already made the game. It's yes. in PS4. Just, just localize it and just get it out. Just like, please. do it. Just <laughs> do it. <laughs> that joke would never not be. Oh, and oh, God, man. we're dating ourselves. Um, <laughs> mm. Don't let your memes stay dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate oh, everything man. about this. Um, <laughs> but yes. Yeah, apparently that's it. Apparently we just have to be more vocal. Yeah, so well, I think we can do this. Show. Uh, I mean, yeah. and and right now, honestly, TriAce could probably use a little bit of that cash infusion. You know, a little mm -hmm. bit of that, a uh, little bit of that low hanging fruit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, I don't know. Would any money actually go to TriAce if they if the game's already done and they're just mm. residuals? Maybe. Localizing it. I don't know. Maybe. It, maybe it some depends on the contract. Things. But yeah, I would love to see it. Yeah. Make it make it happen, Square Enix. Or or try Ace, yeah. Or oh, try Ace. Help help help. Well, no, us. it's got to be Square help them make it. Yeah, it's got to be both. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's hope that they can do it. Um, yep. Now, unfortunately, I do have a, a, a last bit of industry news that is a bit. Um, well, we've had a lot of unfortunate news lately, and this is continuing on with some of that unfortunate news. So, um, we are sad to report that uh, developer Reiko uh, Kodama has recently passed away. We know about this because fans spotted a tribute to Kodama on the Sega Mini Drive 2. Uh, Sega has since confirmed that the developer has passed away, but did not provide any additional details out of respect for the privacy of her and her family. Uh, among her many works, Kodama was known for being an artist and producer of games such as Fantasy Star, Seventh Dragon, and the mo the 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 fan beloved uh yeah. skies of arcadia so bummer yeah oof man yeah so apparently I, I didn't know this until i read into it but like apparently fans just spotted like a tribute <laughs> as they're playing through the sega mini drive 2 there's like what is this sega you got some explaining to do and sega's like yeah about that yeah that's that's the thing that happened 
and and we don't have anything else for you. That's 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 all we that's all we've got. Mm-hmm. So we, we can just confirm this. That's it. So uh, you know, uh, obviously, uh, it's condolences to the family and also to all the fans uh, of, of these great works. I have actually not personally played Sky's of Arcade, but I've seen it played and it looks gorgeous. Uh, neither have I played Fantasy, but I have played Seven Dragon. It was a really fun game. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. All, all the all the fans who are here right now, again, just you know, our condolences to you as well. Um, go play those games uh, and just you know, re- remember that as as Derek was saying uh, before the show when we we're just discussing it. Yeah, time is fleeing. So you know, yeah. just cherish the things that you have. Cherish the people that you have around you. Definitely. Uh, all right. So moving on to fan community uh, news, uh, fans and community news. Uh, I've got yet uh, another piece of bad news. I know it just keeps on coming. This time does not uh, uh, tragic, but it's still pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the prolific game news account Nibble has quit Twitter. Um, so the anonymous rapid video game reporter who goes by the handle Nibel, Nibel, I think it's Nibel, um, has announced that they will be quitting the platform and moving on to something else. Quote mm-hmm. from their goodbye post, uh, after some introspection, I've made the decision to focus my time and energy elsewhere and move on from Twitter. This marks the end of my video game coverage and time on this platform. Thanks for the fun times, everyone. Now as to why Nibel is leaving now, they've cited Elon Musk um, acquisition of the platform to be the main reason, stating, I do not trust Musk and his seemingly infinite immaturity. I do not think Twitter will fall apart instantly, but that could be uh, that they could uh, die a slow death. Why waste more time? Yeah. Uh, end quote. So uh, he will be missed, uh, or I should say they will be missed, um, but because we don't actually know who Nabel is, but they have been just a super prolific, uh, you know, rapid responder of uh, many, in fact, many game sites, sites, uh, you know, their report. Uh, yeah. and, and it's, you know, uh, it, I, we certainly have cited a couple of things from them. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great loss to the, uh, to the game community at large. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, some other entity might be able to fill the void because, uh, those, those were some good reportings, uh, from the bell and, um, and obviously they're probably not listening to this. Uh, but if you are, thank you so much for your service. All right. Now, uh, moving on to the final and last section of our report uh, this evening, we've got a little bit of uh, merch drops. Not really merch, but uh, you know what's going to help us cope with all these bad news? Well, Square Enix just released two remix albums called Mellow Minstro uh, Mix Volume 2 and Airship Cruise Beats Volume 2. Actually, uh, hold on. Uh, Can you switch over to uh my screen really quick i can yeah yeah let's let's pull it up show you some graphics talking about this okay so we got the mellow minstrel mix volume two and air cruise beats volume two don't worry about the nihongo here okay like you can get this in english um so the Mellow Minstrel is a chill remix album uh, that will include Cosmo Canyon from Final Fantasy VII, Weight of the World from Nier Automata, uh, and A Distant Promise from Xenogears, of all things. Uh, mm. Whereas the Airship Cruise uh, album uh, is an EDM remix, so, you know, not a chill album. Uh, <laughs> and that will feature, uh, uh, you know, songs such as uh, The Four Sinistros Battle 2 from Romance and Saga 3, uh, Heighten, oh wait, Height, sorry, High Tension Wire from Trials of Mana, and Dark Dawn from Xenogears. Both albums will feature 13 songs each, and both are now available digitally on Apple Music. So if you have access to Apple Music, you can get these cool albums i i probably will get them myself because i actually really like square enix music they say what you want about their games like i I, there's not a single game from square enix where i'm just like oh god this music is awful like no i love 
basically every one of their uh games albums so and i do like their remixes too so i'm really looking forward to this you know that would be an interesting challenge what is the worst square enix soundtrack that's that's kind of what i want to know Ooh. Like, that's, huh. that's, uh, it's not a uh, it's not an easy question is it like the worst yeah like the best is always easy right it's because it's probably Chrono one Cross, of the right probably but, one of the saga games it's like one of the Game Boy Saga games, probably. I mean, I don't know about that though, because because mm. on Game Boy you have you've got a pretty awesome sound chip to start with. It's honestly like the the Game Boy sound chip is actually more powerful than the the NES sound chip, believe it or not, which is kind of bizarre to think about. But um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm thinking in terms of composition too. In terms of you know, composition, like, mm. okay. Yeah, Chad is saying DQ11 is pretty weak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, DQ11 might, I mean, but a lot of it is supplemented by really great music from earlier entries in the series. The original works for DQ11, if you only mm -hmm. count those, yeah, they're a little, eh, mm. uh, eh. Mm. but, but, I mean, the included stuff from previous works were still pretty banging. Yeah, like Valkyrie Profile, like, still one of my favorite, like, album to listen to. Like, I don't know, something about Valkyrie Profile sound just works so well with the North Anthology background. And it, it was just it's such a gorgeous soundtrack. Uh, uh, obviously, Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, great game, but also the soundtracks. You know what? Never mind. I'm just going to go on and on and gush about like Square Enix uh, music and it's not going to end well. Um, but yeah, you know what? Let us know what you guys think. Yeah. Of what is the worst uh, yeah. Square Enix soundtrack to you, like from which game? Yeah, that's 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 our side question for the day. Bonus side question there. All yes. Right. Okay. But sorry. Last but not least, I I forgot. There's one more thing that I did want to show everyone uh, oh. to end the night to to end all this excitement. Okay. Uh, what what you got? The, uh, well, let's switch on over to uh, to to my uh, Your to screen my screen. Here? Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, so uh, we've got something from uh, Atlas. Mm, at news from Atlas. Hey, yeah, yeah they, they're is... revealing the Shin Megami Tensei 30th anniversary logo. <gasps> look at these logos. Look, look at them. That certainly wow. is a logo. Oh, you that see, is... the, there's the little Jack Frost. There's mm -hmm. the uh, there's the little uh, uh, Jack O' Lantern. Yeah, uh, Pexy's right here. Oh, I'm a yep, little sad uh -huh. that Mara is not in here because yeah, that no would Mara. make a great silhouette. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Can you imagine <laughs> <laughs> Mara just chilling in the background? <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Don't mm. don't Google it, everybody. Do not yeah. Google it. Yeah, no, don't don't Google it. Look, if you get it, you get it. Okay, if you if you don't, you should play an SMT game and and then get with get with the program. Yeah. Uh, and uh, oh, 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 and and here's the Japanese version of the of the oh, logo. Yeah, which yeah. Looks really it looks cool. pretty yeah. much the same, but I like it. It's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, I I like it. I I thought you know the yeah okay, and that's it. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, for any Atlas fan, you knew that uh, this was coming. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't gonna be anything else. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, <laughs> hey, I mean, they're they're kicking it off though. I mean, they're so so. If we if we have anything to judge, uh, based off of the handling of the twenty fifth anniversary of mm -hmm. Persona, uh, we can expect a lot of disappointment in our immediate future. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, probably no less than twenty clothing crossovers. Uh, a couple of plush <laughs> dolls here and there. Uh, maybe like five concerts uh you know a couple of uh vinyls collection again uh maybe a stage play yeah i i think a stage play is in order yeah maybe that's it yeah so you get? <laughs> all right <laughs> people are like persona six no yeah no <laughs> persona six uh, i mean legitimately though uh there might be a game in announced in all of this um yeah no actually persona six might it sounds like Persona 6. It, oh my God. It, okay, not sounds like, but in my mind, I think Persona 6 is uh, likely. SMT now that they fans have... would be so livid. There's <laughs> this there's this split in the fandom. And, and really? SMT fans, like mm -hmm. like Mega 10 SMT game fans, mm -hmm. they 
don't like Persona. Really? At least, at least they don't like Persona fans because we're the annoying newcomers and they're like the, <laughs> you know, they're the 4chan dwellers who are, you know, really, they're, they're the edge lords. They're the, mm -hmm. they're the ones who are like, haha, you know, waifu game bad, you know, but yeah. I mean, but legitimately, there's there's some sore feelings over the whole the like, whole like thing. the hardcore because uh, like because SMT didn't really gain the popularity in the West until Persona kind of brought it into the limelight, and now yeah, and now you know SMT fans are kind of getting shafted. So if they get shafted on their thirtieth anniversary for some Persona Six content when mm. they when they should have just announced it for Persona's twenty fifth anniversary. Like mm. there would be so much, there'd be so <laughs> much salt you could. You could resalt the oceans <laughs> twice over with it. I swear. I mean, look, Persona is SMT. It's just no, nope, they don't just claim it. They don't, it. they don't claim just, us. They don't no. claim us. Just, just it, they don't claim us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, if I mean, you played SMT five. <laughs> I mean, are you saying that you're not? Like some, SMT, your persona. Some of them, uh, some, is that it? some, some very diehard fans of SMT were very pissed that i had the audacity to mention persona when introducing the really? concept of, of smt yeah despite the, despite the, the despite appropriately saying things like you know this is you know this is the game that is and it would eventually spin off into the persona series you know and so there's yeah. some visual similarities and stuff and people will be like how dare you know some people get really it's it's a fandom that I I don't like to interact with a whole lot mm. because of oh. certain you know so just the way that they are like it, there's no making them happy. Oh, that's I try and I do try of, uh... and I and I like per, I like <laughs> I like Persona almost <laughs> almost yes <laughs> almost uh, poked a bear there. I, I like SMT. I do. Uh, I wonder what they say about so hackers because now you don't have like the teeny the teeny bobbers, but oh, I don't yeah, know no relationships, but you know it's it's pretty you know hardcore, right? Like people getting shot and bleeding all over. But they'd probably say it's like SMT, but without the soul or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, IGN, I see you. <laughs> No, but that's wow. that's the sort of stuff that that just stokes the flames, though, for them. Honestly, like I mean, those sorts of comments about SMT. I, yeah. I mean, there's there's definitely some like, uh, some hurt feelings over and, and like like rightfully so in a lot of ways, but a lot of them are also very trigger happy. Um, I think that's why I feel about uh, that's how I feel about a uh, Fate Stay Night for any for any like anime nerds out there. Um, yeah, Fate Fate just sort of took over the entire like thing called like a Nazi-verse, mm -hmm. where like he had like a lot of other works before, and then like that sort of made the foundation of the Nazi-verse, and then for the past like decade, it's just like nothing but Fate and FGO, and I'm just like I'm so sick of hearing Fate. Like, just like, can we get back to like some of the <laughs> other stuff? So I get it. I get it. Like, I, it's a similar feeling. I just wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be obnoxious about it. Like, I wouldn't go to people's like, you know, FGO stream and be like, how dare you not talk about the other stuff? But yeah, I digress. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be to be clear, I'm talking about just some of the most vocal. Oh, or, yeah. Or, and it's really always the 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 really mean nasty comments that stick with you the most no matter what you yeah. do it, and it's mm -hmm. true for everybody no matter the size of the of the the audience right it's always the yeah. worst things and so i'm not saying the people who like smt are not nice because yeah by and large most people are very nice when you get them out of their tribes but um <laughs> but some people just are are not <laughs> I think most SMT fans that I've run into are happy that I'm even touching anything related just because they're notoriously difficult oh, as yeah. far as like a JRPG is concerned. Yeah. Right. And and so they're like, wow, you're actually playing anything SMT. Okay. How are you liking it? Will you be playing like the SMT like proper? I'm always like, no, because I don't hate myself. <laughs> Well, you I'm know, sorry. it's actually, I mean, at least uh, uh, SMT5 was actually really approachable. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I'm glad, but I'm sure certain gatekeepers weren't too happy. It's like, oh, they made it too easy. Ah, ah. Yep. 
All right, yeah, so let's I'm go sure. ahead and move forward to uh, the last uh, bit of stuff here for the stream, and that's responding to some of the super chats that have slowly rolled in. So, uh, yes, yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, module cell with the fist bump uh, sticker there. Thank you hey, so much. Hey, fist bump, right yeah. back at you. Yeah, and then and then uh, on the heels of our discussion about uh, me getting shamed <laughs> by by Square Enix for not having a PS5. They weren't actually shaming me, <laughs> but I, I felt ashamed anyway. Uh, was from, uh, so Module Cell sent in another another donation here. It says, $69.99 for a PS4 game or to put towards a PS5. Um, hey! Yeah, thank they, you so much. Thank you so much for that. There you go, Derek. You, you oh. can now <laughs> they get said, like a, a tenth of a PS5. They said, uh, if a... If eight people give and the PS5 is yours, well, thank you so much. Oh, that's, you know what? That's true. Like someone, like it's a ninth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I, I yeah. split everything with Baku. So, you know, <laughs> it's okay. We'll, we'll get, also, we'll, we'll get PS5s get at the same time. You can, yes. in, in the meantime, you can share your PS5 with me. <laughs> <laughs> come, come and get it. I, I'd like to see you drive up. Yeah, me too. I'll, yes. if, I, if I drive up, will you give it to me? Uh, if, if you drive up, I will, I will consider it. Cool, because I'm planning on visiting my parents in Pennsylvania this winter. And... <laughs> All right, everybody, well, that is that is it for us for this evening. If you liked today's to. show, I, if you liked this day's show on on this wonderful Halloween evening, uh, be sure to to like the video or or on whatever podcasting platform of choice you are on. Subscribe, do all that fun, crazy stuff, and uh, yeah, I guess we will see you all uh, on Sunday this weekend, right? Yes. We're okay. back to regular hours Sunday. And also, uh, keep an eye out for our, like, holiday schedule. Because believe it or not, oh yeah, people in Japan do take vacations <laughs> near the end of the year. And I don't news believe get you. extremely dry I around the end of you. the year. So Lies and yeah. heresy. Jap Japan uh, works hard all the time. <laughs> but, but for on real. On regular days. But for but, real. But Baku for, like, I... one week. But for, like, one week, they're just gone. Yeah, but for real, Baku yeah. and I will probably take our own individual vacations at some point. So keep your eyes peeled for news on that. You can follow us on our various Twitter platforms where we will announce such things, such as the, the delay of today's show, which I also announced in the community tab of this channel. So check that out every once in a while. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your evening, and we'll see you next, uh, or this Happy weekend. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. Ba -da -ba -ba.